Welcome back to Telltale Books. The book I've got today is And the Hippos Were Boiled in Their Tanks, written collaboratively by Jack Kerouac and William S. Burroughs. Now, I've, we've wanted for a while now to read The Naked Lunch. And I've never read anything by William Burroughs before, or Jack Ker Kerouac. So I, I started to look into Burroughs and look into everything that he wrote. And I came across this. I had never heard of this before. And there's a reason I had never heard of it before. There's a reason why a lot of people have never heard of this before. It's because it was kept hidden for many, many years. Kerouac and Burroughs, before they got anything published, they were, li they were friends and friends with a lot of other people, like Allen Ginsberg, and living in New York City. And Kerouac and Burroughs tried to collaborate on a novel based on real-life happenings among their group of friends. Specifically, two of their friends had been in a park. One of the friends was in love with the other. The other didn't return it. They got into a fight. The one was stabbed to death. And so the other went to prison for murder, but it was... It was self-defense, but he still had to do two years. And so the, this novel was suppressed because that person, when he got out of prison, made it very clear that he did not want any more publicity. He had already been through a lot of publicity surrounding the trial. He didn't want any more publicity. So at first, Kerouac and Burroughs did try to sell it sent it to a lot of publishers and including Simon and Schuster and Ace Books and they all rejected it. So not a big deal that their friend wanted it suppressed because they couldn't get it published anyway. The story then goes that it sat under floorboards till after Kerouac had died, till after Burroughs had died, the manuscript was found and brought back and still held away from publication until everybody else connected with the original real case had passed on. And then the executor of Burroughs' estate then published it. And, and that person wrote a very nice um, afterward to this, to this book. He was James... Grau Grauerholtz? Sorry if I'm murdering the name. Okay, so the book, as you can guess then, is based on what happened with that murder, but v very loosely based. All the names are changed. All the situations are changed. The murder weapon was changed. The location of the murder was, was changed. It, very, very different. So it's, it's the story of the few days that lead up to this murder. And it's, you know, I, I'm not all that familiar with modernist literature, beat generation literature. I've never read Burroughs or Kerouac. I've read some of Ginsberg's poetry. I've read Sylvia Plath. Um, otherwise, modern writers that I've read are like Hemingway. Okay, so it, this is a new experience for me. I wanted to bring more literary fiction into the channel because it, we've been so heavy on science fiction and, and horror lately that I, I just feel we're, we're losing our original um, focus of good literature, no matter what it's called. And so I wanted to get into some more of the of the modern classics and other classics that we haven't really touched on yet. Some of it I've already read, some of it like this one I never even knew existed till now. The title is from what they th what 
what the author of the afterword thinks is made up by Burroughs, a, a radio report of a fire at a zoo. He looked, he kind of checked around and, and there, as far as he can find, there weren't any such fires at any zoos at the time period in, in which this book takes place. So it seems to be from Burroughs' imagination. And it, it's where the zookeeper is being interviewed on the label on the radio and he makes the comment and the hippos were boiled in their tanks. Um, so they just use that for the title because it sounded cool. <laughs> Otherwise it has nothing to do with the book except for the fact that it's it kind of tells you what you're in for, something that's a little surreal. I mean, the opening scene, they're all at a party and these people start breaking off pieces of the glasses they're drinking out of and chewing them. And somebody makes a comment, if you chew it enough, it'll be no different than swallowing sand, which technically is true. But let's face it, you're not going to get it chewed that much. And while you're chewing, it's going to be cutting the hell out of your mouth. And that's exactly what happened. So it, that kind of sets the tone for this story, that these people... The story is about them going going out to eat, getting together for drinks, going to each other's apartment, you know, going here, going there, going to look for work, um, just living everyday, just living everyday lives until all of a sudden there's this event, and then the book has a denouement, and that's it. The story is told in a very matter-of-fact way. The relationships are mostly unemotional. I mean, there's friendships, there's love, there's fights, but they don't have... The writing doesn't seem to carry any kind of emotional punch to it. So this isn't like an exciting adventure novel. It isn't like an exciting crime novel. It isn't a mystery novel. It isn't science fiction. It isn't fantasy. It... it feels kind of surreal but isn't really surrealism I don't know maybe you could say slice, slice of life but it's told in such a matter of fact style such a deadpan matter of fact style of writing that like I say I've never read Kerouac or Burroughs I don't know if that's their style of writing. It reminds me of um, one of Hem Hemingway's novels that's written in a, a very simple, matter-of-fact tone throughout that where there's just this disconnect, this emotional distance from everything. I enjoyed the novel. It moved along really good. It's, it's short, and easy to read. It's not. It's not a thousand-page um, encyclopedia that you're going to spend the next month trying to finish. Um, it was very short and, and read very fast, and it was interesting, but only if you can find yourself interested in the details of their lives, where nothing really exciting is happening. It's like reading about my week. You know, except that there's a murder at the end. And I don't generally murder people on Friday night. Um, <clears throat> haven't yet, anyway. So, you know, that's the only thing that makes it any different from anybody else's everyday lives is that there's this tragic event at the end. And you, you can see things kind of building towards it. Because the one guy, you know, it's, it's two guys. The one guy is a homosexual. He is in love with the other guy. The other guy, it's not quite clear if he's homosexual or not, but he's at least not in love with the first guy. So it doesn't really make a difference. He doesn't want him. And that's where the conflict is. And, and it, it just slowly, subtly builds towards the ending. And otherwise, it's just a lot of going out to eat, getting together for drinks, 
Yeah, and it's told in a, in a pretty detailed manner. This person walked over here and did this, and the other per, while the other person was going down the stairs to do this, and the third person, you know, it, very uh, play by play kind of description of of just everyday lives. But it still was interesting. I wouldn't call this book great. I wouldn't call it a classic. But I would maybe call it foreshadowing foreshadowing of what these two writers would eventually do in their careers. I think it shows their future ability, even though it in itself it's just a good novel. It's not a great novel. Still, if you're interested in modern literature, if you're interested in literary fiction, and if you're interested particularly in the beat writers, I mean, these are the beat writers, Kerouac, Burroughs, and Ginsburg. They were the leaders of that whole movement. And two of them wrote this book. And it was their very first book. They hadn't, well, I don't know if they had written anything before that, if they had written any short stories, but they hadn't gotten anything published. And they didn't get this published either, but, you know, they were trying at this time. They were starting out. And it's interesting to see that. I would recommend it for the, all those reasons to, to people who would like that sort of thing. If you're looking for Brandon Sanderson fan fantasy, this isn't the book. If you're looking for Isaac Asimov science fiction, this isn't the book. If you're looking for Charles Dickens, this isn't the book. If you're looking for um, H.G. Wells, this isn't the book. If you're if you're looking for um, John Steinbeck, this isn't the book. If you're looking for those types of things, this isn't what you're looking for. But if you're looking for that 1950s beat literature the city lights kind of books then this is it this is pretty much where it started I mean most of the beat authors started started their writing at this time just after these events they were friends at this time they weren't published yet none of them had written any of their great works but this event they did write about and from there they went on to write their great works on the road naked lunch howl so this was like the springboard event and the springboard book that would launch the beat um style of literature in the 1950s i don't think i can say much more about it than that than give it a try um I hope I hope you'll find it as enjoyable as I did or hope that you enjoy whatever else you decide to read and leave comments like us subscribe to us come on back next time for another video bye